just to know I'm probably not going to be commentating much on this. It's still a little bit early for me, and my voice isn't good yet. You know what I'm saying? Okay, here we go. Let's watch our launch, our rocket launch. Actually, that looked like it right there. <laughs> By the way, the next launch after this one is the Falcon Heavy. So, this coming up later this month, on the twenty fourth, I believe. Okay, let's listen. Oh Good no, there's morning. fog. It's Wednesday, June twelfth, and we're here at SpaceX headquarters I was afraid in of that. Hawthorne, California. Oh, well. You're looking at a live view of the white velvet fog that surrounds Falcon 9 as it awaits its 7.17 a.m. Pacific time launch from the Vandenberg Air Force Base launch site in California. My name is Kate Tice, and I'm an engineer in the Build and Flight Reliability Department here at SpaceX. Welcome to the webcast for the RadarSat Constellation mission. For today's There's launch, so much foggy, they even got a model of the, the rocket to show FDA. you. All three of these satellites are for the Canadian Space Agency to help enhance maritime surveillance, disaster management, and environmental monitoring. This morning, we have a 13-minute launch window that closes at 7.30 a.m. Pacific. We're currently at T minus 11 minutes and 19 seconds and counting. All systems are currently go. So as you can see on your screen there, uh, it's very foggy at Vandenberg today. Uh, our view is completely obstructed, <laughs> um, and that's pretty common for Vandenberg. Um, but as you can see above the clouds, it is a clear day. Um, now, if we were able to see the launch pad itself, uh, you would see something that looks more like the model that I have here next to me. Uh, Falcon 9 is our 70-meter, two-stage, liquid-fueled launch vehicle. The Just to be clear, the fog is totally the normal. Is it's stage, actually quite common at Vandenberg. Um, uh, in the morning, especially, it, it just doesn't. Uh, it obviously makes for terrible launch viewing. Today, we will be attempting to recover this first stage for the second uh, time. Don't expect to see much, uh, at our landing especially the landing. East. This booster flew for the first time earlier this year on our Demo One mission for NASA. On top of the first stage is the inner stage, uh, which is black, as you would be able to see if we could. Uh, peer through the fog there. Um, and then on top of the inner stage is the second stage. And uh, the two stages separate about two and a half minutes into flight. And the first stage is the portion of the rocket that we are attempting to recover today. The second stage has a single Merlin vacuum engine, or MBAC, which ignites after the first stage separates. The second stage is what will carry the three radar sat satellites to sun-synchronous low Earth orbit at an altitude of 600 kilometers above the Earth's surface. That's roughly the distance from Los Angeles to San Francisco. Sun-synchronous orbit basically means that the satellite will pass over the same section of Earth at the same time each day. Now, those satellites are safely enclosed inside of the 17-foot diameter payload fairing, which is the pointed cone at the very top of the rocket. Uh, this portion of the rocket helps protect the payload from aerothermal loads, heating, and contamination during ascent. Once we reach the vacuum of space, we will jettison the fairing as the second stage continues on its journey to orbit. Because our recovery vessels are currently at the Cape, we will not be attempting to recover the fairing halves today, but it is something that we will continue to pursue on future missions.
Lastly, the large truss structure that you would normally see out at the pad uh, is the transporter erector, or TE. We use that to roll the rocket out to the pad and raise it to its vertical launch position. The TE also routes the vehicle's fluids, power, and telemetry umbilicals from the ground systems to the rocket and satellites until F9 goes on internal power and clears the pad. At liftoff, it'll retract in order to clear the way for F9's ascent. Falcon 9 rolled out onto the pad with the payload on June 11th. The chief engineer held a technical poll at T minus one hour, and the launch director held a propellant load and launch readiness poll at T minus 38 minutes. Falcon 9 has been loading propellant since T minus 35 minutes. F9 uses rocket grade kerosene, or you hear us call that RP1, for its fuel and liquid oxygen, or LOX, as the oxidizer. With fuel and oxidizer on hand, we need an ignition source to complete the fire triangle. For this, Falcon 9 uses T-TEB, which will be seen at T minus zero, with a bright green flash down here near the engine section. Uh, at this point, we are uh, proceeding through prop loading nominally. Uh, it looks like we are nearly complete for locks and fuel. I just on noticed this, stage. but look, complete on it's an everyday astronaut logo on our laptop. On the second stage. So um, there it. are a couple of important activities coming up in the next couple of minutes. At T minus seven, uh, we will begin engine chill. This is where we allow a small amount of the super chilled LOX to flow into the engine's turbo, turbo pumps prior to the full flow of LOX through the Merlin engines. We do this to avoid any thermal shocks to the hardware. Um, <laughs> Normally, you might at this point see large plumes of white gas coming from out around the uh, around the rocket. Of course, we have fog acting as that white plume of gas, um, but that normally would just be the liquid oxygen uh, vaporizing as it makes contact with the air around the rocket. Also, around T minus four and a half minutes, the transporter erector will retract from the rocket slightly to give Falcon 9 clearance for liftoff. At this point, we have also begun helium loading. The vehicle uses helium gas as a pressurant to push the RP-1 and locks through the Merlin engines. If you think about drinking from a soft plastic water bottle, you let air back into the bottle when you're done sipping, which prevents the bottle, which prevents the bottle from crinkling up. Helium is what keeps the rocket from crinkling as we use up the RP-1 and locks within the stage. Now, as far as the space Sorry, that quality. The don't know what rocket, happened there. The three radar sat satellites will remain off until after separation from the launch vehicle. Right now, the vehicle is healthy, and we are currently tracking no issues. Aside from the fog, which doesn't impose any violation of our launch weather conditions, we are green. The range is also green and prepared to support today's mission. We continue to count down to liftoff in just about six minutes. If for some reason we do have a call in, uh, uh, we, if for some reason we have to call a hold on today's launch, we do have a backup opportunity tomorrow um, at the same time. Today's mission is for our customer NDA on behalf of the Canadian government space agency. The three radar sat satellites will help the Canadian government monitor area, <coughs> monitor key areas including maritime, disaster, and environmental surveillance. As mentioned, today's payloads will be delivered to sun-synchronous orbit. Sun-synchronous orbits travel over the Earth's poles as the planet rotates underneath, with the satellites passing over a particular section of the Earth at the same time each day. Let's get some additional details on how these satellites will serve the Canadian government. Our country is vast, with very different challenges, from coast to coast to coast. With the help of satellite technology, the Canadian Space Agency provides solutions to some of those challenges. Oh, Canada. The Radar Sat Constellation mission uses a trio of satellites to take daily scans of our country and its waters. Equipped with radar and ship identification systems, they collect invaluable information about our country. Satellites assist in determining ice conditions, helping captains navigate through Arctic waters and bring supplies to remote villages, and helping northern communities travel safely over ice during hunting and fishing expeditions. Satellites monitor soil stability and changes in the permafrost and gather important data that contributes to understanding climate change so we can better protect our environment and our wildlife. 
To maximize crop yields, farmers use satellite data to measure moisture levels in soil, reducing how much water, pesticide, and fertilizer they use in order to protect and improve the environment for years to come. And when disasters strike and people are in danger, satellite images help rescue teams respond faster, saving lives and reducing the impact on people and infrastructure. The RadarSat Constellation satellites work together to bring solutions to important challenges that affect all Canadians. The Canadian Space Agency, finding solutions for a better Canada. We're currently about three minutes away from liftoff. Falcon 9 is now moving into the final stages of totally not a commercial. The first and second stages are both nearly fully loaded with one million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. At T minus 60 seconds, be sure to listen for the call out that F9 is in startup. This means that the rocket's auto autonomous internal flight computers have taken over the launch countdown. The right, here we go. Payloads continue Two minutes, to be healthy. The left. F9 team is this tracking is no issues on the rocket. Escape, Weather is looking foggy, but good. Um, and the range is green for launch. Let's listen into the countdown that's at now. Team minus one minute will be Falcon 9 going to start up, which means the vehicle w will be on internal power and will all be autonomous. And uh, the only input people will have is to shut it down. And even then, it usually shuts itself down. It does a problem, so. After after T minus one minute, it's all automated, um, and then after liftoff, you have the regular timeline. So this one will be coming back. They've already mentioned this, but back to um, landing zone four, as they call it. Uh, it's really called Slick Four West. Um, in this picture, there'll be a rocket over here, and the landing zone will be over here if there were fog. But there's fog, and it's going to be a little difficult to see the um, landing. Power. But that's okay, I kind of expected it with this amount of fog. So let's watch the launch. Falcon 9 is in startup. Stage 2 pressing for flight. Falcon 9 radar set, go for launch and landing. Minus 30 seconds, stand by for the countdown. Stage one pressing for flight. Final countdown approaching in three seconds. Falcon 9 skip here for flight. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ignition. Lift off to Falcon 9. Vehicle pitching down the Look at that. Stage one propulsion is coming. Be even cooler seeing that come back. Down through the fog. Power and telemetry now. As you just saw, Falcon 9 had an on time liftoff through the fog from Vandenberg Air Force Base. 
approaching max Q. Vehicle is supersonic. Vehicle is passing through maximum dynamic pressure. We now have three events coming up in rapid succession. Main engine cutoff, stage separation, and second engine start one, or SES one. All of these things you can follow along job. with uh, on the timeline at the bottom of your screen. It's worth noting this point that uh, the Jason 3 landing Main failed because of, of ice because of the fog of that day. Just saying. Trajectory is looking good. Okay, we're gonna have stage separation coming up any second now. Where's Miko? Miko. Stage separation stage, now. Stage separation. And then we have this first stage doing its. And there uh, on your screen, you can see that we have visual confirmation of main engine cutoff, stage separation, and second engine start one. So on the left-hand side of your screen, we'll watch the first stage as see it begins the boost that return there. back to Vandenberg Air Force Base. On the right-hand side of your screen, you can see the second engine as it begins to carry the three radar sat satellites to sun-synchronous orbit. This fairing come off now. So there boost back burn has begun. There you just saw fairing deployment. Very important to pop those it's off, otherwise the mission will be a failure. No matter what. Away. And we have about 10 seconds left in the boost back burn. Really nice it the fog. <laughs> so the shot you see on your left is from inside yeah, the interstage. And boost back. Confirmation of boost back shutdown. So, in order for stage the first stage to make its way back to landing zone one at Vandenberg Air Force Base, uh, it has to execute a series of three burns. The first, which you just saw, is what we call the boost back burn, and that helps to slow the rocket down and orient it for entry. Shortly after this, um, the grid fins, which you see right there, uh, articulating as they help steer the rocket back to Vandenberg, uh, those are deployed to help guide the rocket during its descent. Following that, Falcon 9 executes its entry burn, and that slows itself down before hitting the dense part of the atmosphere. Look at the texture in those clouds down there. The entry burn actually cuts the first stage speed almost in half. So that's what will be coming up next at about the T plus six minute mark. The third and final burn that stage one will execute today is the landing burn. Happens to be everybody's favorite burn. And that takes place just before touchdown as the booster touches down softly. Might have to go dark route. here. So if you happen to like be in the greater Vandenberg good. Air Force Base area, um, I recommend that you head outside Not because like good, good you are very stream. likely in range to experience the sonic boom that comes with re-entry. So at T plus five minutes now, we have confirmation that MVAC power is good. Trajectory is looking good. Despite the foggy view from this morning, everything is looking good. One last thing, you see that you see that shadow there? That's from the contrail that the rocket left when it went through the uh, upper, upper atmosphere. It's really cool. That's not it. it. Must be here or something. I don't know.
We are 10 seconds till entry burn. Entry burn coming up in any second. There it is. Stage one, entry burn has started. Confirmation that stage one entry burn has started. So there on the left hand side of your screen, you see the first stage as it's making its way back to landing zone one at Vandenberg Air Force Base with the help of the grid fins as it steers. The view on your right is the same operation that we have going on just from a different camera. So there you can and see that we have confirmation one, of stage one down. entry burn shut down. Stage two on the right hand side there. No, Looking no, good. Focus on Everything the is stage nominal the and camera. trajectory is good. Stage one FTS is safe. Bring another camera back. But Slowly but focus. surely you can see the layer of fog reapproaching uh, on the left hand side as we have a view from the top of the first stage rocket looking down the rocket towards the engine section. section. You heard the call out for stage one transonic. It's going to be very anticlimactic. Oh no, there we go. Landing burn has begun. Oh, just in case they didn't cover it, this one has, this particular booster is already on the fog, space might and launch the, the um, video Dragon as it touches down, but stay tuned. Bye, Rocket. <laughs> okay, there you can see. No, that's right. There you can see, again through the fog, but at least a little bit more clearly this time, Falcon 9 has landed at landing zone 1 back at Vandenberg Air Force Base. So with that good news, we turn back into second stage, our primary mission, stage as it continues to carry the three radar sat constellation satellites to sun synchronous orbit. Now. Seven, 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 That's a shot of the MVEC nozzle as it burns Seco. through. And there we had confirmation of second engine cutoff or SECO. So now we're just going to wait for confirmation of second stage good orbit. GNC confirms good first orbit insertion. All right, we have confirmation that we have a good orbit for a second stage. Now we're about to enter a 40 minute coast phase, so we're going to take a break, but we're leaving you with an animation that shows where we are in the coast phase. We'll be back at about T plus 49 and a half minutes for a second stage relay. Also signal Vandenberg as expected. Also signal Hawthorne as expected.
Okay. So coming up in about a minute will be the second engine startup and then second engine um, cutoff, number two. Shortly after that will be the first deploy and second deploy. Signal Welcome back to our webcast this morning. Maybe you're watching us while you're enjoying your breakfast. Thanks for hanging out uh, during that rather lengthy break. Right now, our second stage is about to very briefly reignite its MVAC-D engine for the second and final burn. We'll see that happen at T plus 50 minutes and nine seconds, and that'll last for about 10 seconds. After that, we'll be waiting to hear if we have second stage in good orbit. Recognition. And I've actually done. So there on your screen, you saw confirmation of second engine start two, as well as Seco to second engine cutoff. So we're going to wait to confirm that GNC we have a good, good orbit. orbit. Actually, I just heard the call out. We have a good orbit for a second stage. Right now, what so, it's doing uh, as of right is now, we'll be coasting for the next thrusting forward so. with uh, so we'll its reaction control thrusters to try and settle the fuel the toward the back the three radar set so that when it saddle. starts, it doesn't ingest nothing or air uh, or helium, actually, and have a dry start, which would be a very, very bad thing to have happen. It's very important to be um, to settle the fuel because you know it's in microgravity. It's weightless. The fuel's all just in a big blob floating around in the tank. So you have to settle it towards the back so the engine can actually get it. I have a small correction to make. Um, I said it was RCS that was actually venting the oxygen from the tank, purging everything that's left. Because the stage is... well, not everything. Oh, there's, there's a deploy. What? What was that?
Okay, that was weird. Um, but yeah. You have to have some leftover. I guess maybe it was actually RCS positioning in the upper stage. Right now, we're less than a minute know. away from the deployment of the radar sat satellites. Just in case you're tuning in on our mission this morning, uh, we had an on time liftoff from Vandenberg Air Force Base this morning at 7 17 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, followed by gorgeous shots of Falcon 9 rising from the fog. Um, we managed to land the first stage back at landing zone one, again at Vandenberg Air Force Base. So hopefully those of you in the Vandenberg area got to experience that sonic boom. Um, as you can see uh, on your screen right now, second stage is about to deploy the three radar sat satellites uh, on our mission today. Acquisition of signal, Melindy. So the view that you see right now is at the top of the second stage, looking out into two of the three radar sat satellites. And that's on the right hand side, of course, is the okay, sun, which is giving us some them. cool solar flares. And there on your screen, you can Got see one. visual confirmation of the first of three set, uh, payload deployments. So we are not launching these one, two, three in rapid succession. They are spaced out a little bit by a few minutes each. While our customer is MDA, all three of these satellites are for the Canadian Space Agency to help enhance maritime surveillance, disaster management, and environmental monitoring. Maritime surveillance includes ship detection, ice monitoring, oil pollution monitoring, and marine wind measurement. Disaster management includes disaster mitigation, warning, response, and recovery. And environmental monitoring includes forestry, protected areas and wildlife habitat, agriculture, wetlands, and coastal change. So the next deployment will be coming up at T plus 58 minutes and 23 seconds. So we're just a little over two minutes away from that. Sit tight and we'll bring that to you in just a few. Alright, go and dart for this through uh, webcast. Sorry about that. Enjoy the rest of the satellite deployments. So in about 20 seconds, we will have the second of three payload deployments. Again, we have three radar sat satellites on board for today's mission. We have already successfully deployed the first one a couple minutes ago, and we're now awaiting to deploy the second. Payload two deployed. And confirmed. there on your screen, you can see that we have successfully deployed the second of three of the radar sat satellites. As I mentioned earlier, today's payloads will be delivered to sun synchronous orbit. 
sun-synchronous orbits travel over the Earth's poles as the planet rotates underneath, and that allows the satellites to pass over a particular section of Earth at the same time each day. Our final deployment is coming up at the one hour and two minute mark and 13 seconds. So uh, stay tuned and we'll be back in a few minutes to bring you that. So it seems like we've had another deployment, but that was that went well. Third, third and final deployment is coming up in a few minutes, doesn't it? Morandi is continuing to supply telemetry with no video as expected. So we're coming up on our third and final deployment for this morning's mission. Uh, I am hearing from the team that while we will have telemetry available, we might not have video. So stay tuned on the right hand side of your screen there if we're able to bring you uh, footage of the final deployment. We certainly will. Um, but as soon as I hear, uh, I just heard the call out that all payloads have been deployed. So unfortunately, no video on that one. but. With those three successful deployments, that brings our webcast to a close. close for today. Uh, on time liftoff from Vandenberg Air Force Base this morning, rising out of the fog for a beautiful liftoff as well as landing. Um, uh, and as I just mentioned, we were able to successfully deploy all three of the RadarSat Constellation satellites. We would like to thank the U.S. Air Force for range support and the FAA for licensing today's launch. We'd also like to thank all our viewers for tuning in. Follow our website and social media platforms for updates on our next missions and milestones. Until next time, have a great day.
Alright, that looks to be the last of the satellites. And that will conclude SpaceX's coverage, and that will conclude my coverage. Um, I'll see you tomorrow night. Goodbye.